I want to go ahead and dispel the myth that this is somehow a one-off, uh, that this was just, um, you know, a, a, a bad luck incident from an otherwise sound department. The Fort Worth Police Department is on pace to be one of the deadliest police departments in the United States. Uh, they're in need of serious systematic reform. We are asking that the, the federal government comes in, the Department of Justice comes in and takes a heavy, uh, a conscious look at the, the policies and procedures that allowed something like this tragedy to happen. This was a wellness call. It's beyond me to begin to understand what kind of police force responds to a wellness call with the equivalent of SWAT. Uh, this department and their officers uh, violated not only the rights of, of Tay Jefferson and her family, uh, but they just made common sense mistakes. They passed an open door. They failed to announce themselves. They passed a second open door. They failed to announce themselves. They creeped around the back of the apartment and entered a closed gate. They didn't have probable cause at this point from what the neighbor told them to even enter that property. They began creeping around and they created a deadly situation. The idea that they have blasted images of a firearm uh, across the internet is obscene. Of course, a family owns a firearm. Of course, firearms are used to protect individuals from predators uh, prowling about their property. That's only common sense. They created a deadly situation, and they responded in a way that is not unique uh, to the city of Fort Worth. Uh, in the last six months, they've had 10 officer-involved shootings, seven, um, seven officer-involved deaths. That's more than most nations uh, for one, a single city in Texas. It represents a serious problem that must be addressed. So of course, this family is calling for the firing of this officer, that's benign. That's the least we, could, we should expect. They're calling for this officer to be vigorously prosecuted, to be appropriately sentenced. Uh, that prosecution, the investigation, should be handled by someone other than the Fort Worth Police Department, uh, specifically the Department of Justice, the FBI, or worst case scenario, the, the, the local sheriff's department. Anyone other than the city of Fort Worth who is clearly incompetent to investigate itself should be called in. Uh, we expect this to happen immediately. This happened Saturday. Why this man is not in handcuffs right now is, is a source of continued agitation for this family and for this community, uh, and it must be addressed. In a moment, you'll hear from uh, Corey Hughes, uh, who is an, an activist and a member of the Fort Worth community, and then you'll hear directly from uh, the family of Ted Jefferson. Uh, just for the correct spelling of my name, it is C-O-R-Y, last name Hughes, H-U-G-H-E-S. The, the reality is I've had the un unfortunate responsibility of sitting in front of these cameras and sitting next to families that have lost loved ones by the hand of, of police officers all too often. As a member of, of the community of Fort Worth, as someone that has taken the responsibility to be a voice for my community. I want to set the record straight that we're not looking for a 30-day suspension. We're not looking for a slap on the wrist. We're not looking for what seems to be status quo, is that the people that we hire to serve and protect us, when one of their own violates the community, it seems like they do more of trying to serve and protect their own. So what we're looking for is for this officer not only to be fired, but we're demanding that this officer be charged as well like the criminal that he is. It's a sad commentary in this day and age that someone could be sitting in their home playing a video game with a family member and not be safe. That when someone calls the police for a wellness check, then instead of them checking on how well she is, days later we're here talking about the fact that an officer took her life. It's unacceptable. We're demanding justice. We're demanding that the mayor and the city officials don't sweep this under the rug. We're not going to allow you to. 
This life matter. This life matter. This family matters. And we're demanding justice, and we're not going to wait. We demand justice now. Thank you. All right, the next person that you hear from uh, is going to be the brother <coughs> of Atta. Excuse me. Of Atta, Tamiana Jefferson. Uh, and I'll allow him to introduce himself. My name is uh, Darius Carr. I am currently stationed in San Diego. I served my country for the last 12 years. In that time, I've been trained and taught there are pre-planned responses to everything you do. Everything you're trained about, there's a, a way to do things. But when you don't do it the way you've been trained, the way you've been taught, you have to answer for that. You have been trained. You know better, so you have to answer for that. Not in your command, not in your department. Someone comes in and investigates the whole incident. Fort Worth PD cannot investigate themselves. U.S. Navy is allowed to do it. They should not be well. This man murdered someone. He should be arrested. And we want to continue to echo the calls. Um, and be clear that this family is standing in solidarity, that Fort Worth needs to recuse itself from this, uh, from this investigation. And they need to bring in an outside agency. And they need to make sure this officer is treated like any other criminal suspect in our criminal justice system. Uh, the next person that you're going to hear from is uh, the sister of Amber. I'm sorry, the sister of Tay, and her name is Amber. I'm Amber Carr. I'm actually just screw up just a little bit. I'm sorry. Okay. Amber Carr, I'm her, one of her older sisters. We're 11 months apart. We grew up together. Um, the last time I spoke to my sister was last Saturday. She came to the hospital in Plano where I was recovering from a major heart surgery. Um, she came, brought me food. She brought me a new cell phone. She talked about how this weekend actually was the weekend that she and my older sister were planning to take the boys to the fair and asked me what did I want back considering she knew I wasn't gonna be able to walk the fair part. Um, my sister, uh, she, the relationship she has with my sons is undescribable. Uh, sometimes people think that they're her kids and not mine. She helped Zion every day to get ready for school because my mother wasn't capable of doing it. She wrote out a schedule so that he could be organized. She helped him understand that he had to be responsible for putting on his clothes picking out his clothes and getting ready on time to leave for the day. Um, those were things that my mom did for him. So she helped him become more independent and self-sufficient. My son, who was there to witness the event, you would think that, you know, he would show some type of sadness or emotions, but the first time I actually got to see him and pick him up from a facility for children, the first thing he told me was he was sad. And I asked him, why was he sad? And he told me because the police had killed his, had shot his aunt. And at that time, I knew nothing about that. So he was the one who actually told me what had what happened. Um, but at this time, he's my motivation. He's my biggest encourager. In the middle of the night when I'm crying, he wakes up and tells me to breathe in my nose and out my mouth. He holds me. He hugs me. And these are the things I should be doing for him, but he's not reacting in that manner. He's helping me 
to be strong. And I believe that's because my sister had a big part in that. The next person that you're going to hear from, she's prepared a statement. I'm going to allow her to come around. Her name is Ashley Carr, and she's the older sister. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ashley Carr. I was a Tatiana Jefferson's oldest sister. Um, I'm here to read a statement for the family so that we can all be on one accord. An arc of a moral universe is a long one, but it bends towards justice. Martin Luther King. Our family first would like to thank the thousands who called, who sent messages, who reached out via social media, offering words of encouragement and condolences. We appreciate your powerful solitude with us as we go through this unbelievable time of shock and sorrow. Secondly, our family would like you to know more about this beautiful soul, Tatiana Jefferson. She was a smart, ambitious, kind person with a nurturing spirit. She was a graduate of Xavier University with a Bachelor's of Science degree in mathematics, and I mean, that's me, in biology, and was committed to fur furthering her education. She was a hard worker where her co-workers saw her as a person of being, of a person of full integrity. She was loved, she loved her family so much that at the age of 28, she decided to move into our, our mother's home to help her as her health was declining. Honor, integrity, commitment, and service. These are the attributes of a Tatiana Jefferson. Any parent would be proud to call her a daughter. Any sibling would be proud to call her a sister. Any employer would be proud to call her an employee. Any neighborhood would be proud to have her as a neighbor. And any city would be proud to have her as a citizen. And yet, in the early mornings of October 11, 2019, she was simply going on along with her life, living a law-abiding, a citizen's peaceful life. And she was killed by a reckless act of a Fort Worth police officer. There is simply no justification for his actions. She was enjoying a life in her home where no one would have expected it to be her, her life to be in harm's way, especially not at the hands of a civil servant who had taken the oath to serve and protect. Our family now is asking the city of Fort Worth to exhibit the same characteristics of a Tatiana Jefferson, to be honorable when, they, when it comes to narrating the memory of this beautiful soul, to have integrity and bring the federal government in to investigate, to be committed to a swift and appropriate prosecution serve the entire community of Fort Worth by training your officers to execute responses to appropriate situations. In closing, we demand justice for a Tatiana through an independent, thorough, and transparent process. The family of a Tatiana Jefferson and the world eagerly awaits your response to this tragedy. It is imperative that your response bends towards justice. Thank you. Are you next going to hear from um, the sister of Yolanda Carr, who is the mother? I'm going to take a seat back there. Uh, who is the mother of Tay Jefferson? Uh, she couldn't be with us today because. She is hospitalized, and she's recovering from injuries that, that predated this incident. Um, th those injuries are the reason that um, Tay 
moved in with her mom, that she was at, at, at this address uh, because she was helping her uh, back and forth to the hospital and helping her around the home. Uh, she wants to be here and stand with her family. Uh, we have uh, been back and forth to the hospital with her every night, uh, keeping her in the loop. She is, of course, heartbroken, and her sister wants to speak on her behalf. Hello, everyone. My name is Benita Body. I am Tatiana's aunt and Yolanda Carr's, Tay's mother, oldest sister. I'm speaking on her behalf today because she could not be here. As you have heard, her health is declining. And I've heard of the allegations of Mr. Marquise Jefferson, is what I want to address, claiming to be her biological father, which he is not, nor has he ever had legal custody of her. We have not as a family heard from Mr. Jefferson, and if he cares to reach out to us, we would be more than happy to address his concerns. And I want you to know that the GoFundMe page that is family approved to Tay's legal family. And I thank everyone for their outreach, for their giving, and for the love that they have shown us today. All right, thank you so much. And um, we, have, uh, we have asked you all not to direct questions to the family. I'm sure you all have some for them. But uh, I and um, Corey Hughes or uh, some of the uh, pastors uh, and attorneys who are working on the case with me are happy to answer some questions. Please, the Florida Police Department was pretty fast in releasing that body cam video. Uh, just trying to get from you your, your thoughts about it after seeing it, what perhaps had the family weighed in. Uh, about that video um, and, and just your thoughts in general about what you see there? We appreciate that the Fort Worth Police Department released this video immediately. Um, that's the kind of transparency that we need to get to the bottom of these cases. However, um, they threw in an unrelated, according to their statement, a photograph of a, a firearm. And in order to, um, I guess, impute some um, bad act or blame on the victim itself, uh, that was not necessarily to circulate. And that's more like the Fort Worth that we know. Um, we, um, we, when we look at the video and we see, it was several officers prowling around the property, uh, literally crawling, whispering, as if they were conducting some sort of clandestine uh, abstraction. It's absurd when you know what, what the call is. They finally released the, the emergency call yesterday, which, I'm sorry, the non-emergency call yesterday, which was uh, a neighbor who was concerned about an ailing woman across the street. He, <coughs> he, he, he gave no indication that he believed that a crime was taking place, that he was in fear for his life or the safety of uh, the members in that home or the community. He said he saw some doors open. Um, and so to see them, again, pass those open doors without announcing themselves, to park around the corner so that no one, if they happened to be near the home, could know who they were. Um, and, then, and then to escalate the situation as they entered the property, it's, it's, it's just unacceptable. Lee? Yes. Uh, why do you fear that the Fort Worth Police Department will not charge this officer and uh, perhaps not do a complete and thorough investigation? Experience. Experience tells us that law enforcement uh, officers, uh, law enforcement departments aren't competent to investigate themselves. Uh, we've seen over and over and over again where they make recommendations uh, for additional training, for suspensions, or that nothing happens to them. They, they've already begun to lay out their defense in this case. They obviously have a dog in the fight or they wouldn't have released the picture of the firearm uh, to the public, but they're trying to make a case for what we hear far too often that this uh, that he, this officer perceived a threat and uh, and reacted according to his training. They violated their training over and over again. Uh, they they interestingly enough cut off the video immediately after the shot. I would love to hear uh, the rest of the conversation from the other officers because this was completely uncalled for, and there probably was one officer there with some common sense that chastised this rookie who had no business as a part of the SRT uh, team, uh, an elite unit. Uh, in the first place, so. Uh, 
what is um, Adarius's branch uh, and it, 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 in your service? And one thing I seem to hear over and over is that idea of service, the fact that Tay was serving her mother, the fact that you had your own service. Um, can you talk about that and uh, how that affected her life? You violating the rules, but I'll let him answer that. That's yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, my service is U.S. Navy. Yeah. Um, service is real big for our family. We, we want to get back to this world. We want to make it a better place. I proudly serve my country, and I'm going to do it for the rest of my life. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, Lee, you mentioned um, with Amber there about Zion. And just uh, how is he doing? I know he's aiding this. He may not be able to process this, but you've been able to family's been able, he was there. That's something that sounds horrific. Uh, Zion surprises me with how much he recalls. Uh, Zion is going to start counseling this week uh, because we don't know the uh, emotional trauma, the psychological trauma that seeing something like this uh, can have on an eight-year-old. He was present the entire time. He never left the room. Uh, he saw, uh, he, he and his auntie Tay experienced the fear of someone prowling in the backyard. His Auntie Tay did not allow him to check the window. She checked herself. I, I asked myself what would have happened if that little boy went to the window instead of his auntie. Um, um, he saw her when she fell. Um, and he has found a way to maintain more composure than the Fort Worth Police Department. He still offers his mother and his family um, uh, consolement. He encourages his mother when he hears her crying in the middle of the night. Um, she tells me, he says, what did I, um, remember what I told you. Yeah. I guess he's giving you some words of encouragement. Yeah. What was the words of encouragement he gave? It was just breathe through your nose, out your mouth. <laughs> so he's, he's learned coping mechanisms in yeah. school for a high stress situation. Yeah. And, and he, and he, uh, he encourages his mother to, to try some of those out to get her through this difficult time. Yeah, it was a fall evening. Uh, for those of you all who live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, it was one of the first, this week was one of the first chills that we've had uh, for a relatively warm fall. Um, and so they opened the doors, um, you know, and they allowed the, uh, allowed the breeze to flow through the house. And those two stayed up all night playing. I've said Halo before I was wrong. They were up all night playing Call of Duty. Um, Tatiana is a gamer. <laughs> I mean, Tatiana. Is a, is a gamer. She loved uh, video games, and she beat her brother <laughs> and, and a few times, and uh, she, she, she loved playing with her nephew. They did that all night from sunset to the, until the time that they lost track of time around 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning when they heard someone prowling around in the bushes. So it would not have been out of character or uncharacteristically for her to have the door open for the family? No, it's not out of character, uh, character at all. Now, we understand why the neighbor uh, perceived that as something strange. He understood that mom was in the hospital. Um, and so he didn't understand why the door was open. Um, and so he called for a wellness check. He thought maybe that she had been released from the hospital and had another uh, traumatic event. And she possibly may have needed help. Uh, so uh, the, the family prepared a statement, and that's all they're going to say about uh, her for the moment. Yeah. For that uh, firearm that the police put out the picture of, um, are you able to speak uh, on sure. where it was in the house and um, if it was even owned by her? Yeah, it was a legally owned firearm uh, that, that um, Tay uh, uh, is, a, uh, of course, in Texas, allowed to keep inside of her home, but she, uh, she also had a license to carry. From what you know, does it appear that police I haven't heard anything about uh, the, the, render, the rendering of aid. My understanding is that she uh, perished on the scene. Um, but I, this family has been learning, and uh, we're waiting to hear back from the medical examiner about where she was struck and what kind of steps were taken to try to save her life. Had the neighbor and the family been close? You mentioned that, that, that you knew she just been released from the hospital. Like, had they, had they been close before? This, they... I'm sorry. This was a tight-knit community. People knew each other. Uh, and it's scary to see the Fort Worth Police Department's response to this community. 
uh, we believe that the, the fact that this was a black neighborhood had a, had a role in mm. their response to it. The fact that they showed up with SWAT as opposed to your friendly neighborhood cop. Um, um, but this was one of the nicest houses on the block. This was, a, this was what you would expect in the situation for law enforcement to go over to the neighbor and say, hey, you made a call. Do you want to come over with us? Uh, this is what American communities should expect, but black communities get the opposite. Uh, this is not the first time that a black person in Fort Worth called law enforcement for help and was brutalized. I, I in fact, represent two. Uh, Jacqueline Craig, uh, who called the neighbor, uh, called law enforcement for help and instead had her and her teenage daughters brutalized on national TV. Uh, this is a pattern for that department. Uh, and it, it seems common when dealing with people of African American descent. We know that Fort Worth police uh, aren't scheduling uh, some news events this afternoon. Does the family or any representatives of the family plan to attend that? We will be there. My office, uh, I and my uh, representatives from my office will be there. Um, the only thing that we expect to hear uh, is that this officer is immediately terminated and that they're recusing themselves from the investigation that they've asked for an outside department to come in and take over investigating um, not only this officer's actions, but the department's practices. Uh, this is a, this is a, a problematic police department. I don't expect them to acknowledge that themselves, uh, but they just lost a police chief who was suing them um, based on their um, uh, what he has alleged is race-based discrimination. Uh, this is a, it's a police department that has, has been, been mentioned. There's been 10 incidents like this, 10 police officer involved shootings in the last six months, which is more most, than most nations after years and years. That chief is having a conference later today. He's going to be making some remarks, evidently something to the effect that he should be back. Do you have any thoughts about any of that? There needs to be steps taken to radically reform uh, the city of Fort Worth. Uh, Chief Joel Fitzgerald held himself out as a reformer, uh, and, he, and, and he, at least again, held himself out as, to hope, as hoping to make change. This family, the community, is less concerned with figureheads. We don't believe that Chief, Chief Fitzgerald is, is a savior, but there needs to be policies in, uh, set in place, uh, training set in place. There needs to be radical reform within that department. If Chief Fitzgerald is the person to lead the charge for uh, or I should say former Chief Fitzgerald is the person to lead the charge for reform, then absolutely. Uh, but it's not about putting a black face on it. It's about actual change. What's your level of concern about what appears to be a rage growing around this, this shooting, um, namely social media? You've got celebrities, uh, politicians that are all speaking <coughs> out about this. Do you have a, uh, any, any thoughts or what, it's what's your concern? Rage. Concern, investment is the appropriate response to someone being killed in their home. It should be sustained until things change and it, and it should remain. Um, this should be outrageous. Uh, there should be so many people invested in this uh, that they keep sustained pressure on the city of Fort Worth until it radically changes. Uh, and so this family uh, is outraged and hurt and they're greatly appreciative of the, the community of folks from all over the world who have reached out to see what is going on in Fort Worth. Um, but we need it to be sustained. And so I, on behalf of this family, we ask that those people who are outraged, uh, that they channel their anger, that they direct it towards policymakers, that they direct it towards uh, substantive changes that can take place. 